Hello everybody, welcome to my How To Car Care Repair Channel. For those of you who are subscribers to my channel, you probably really enjoy my HS250H videos. Unfortunately, those have come to an end. Our vehicle was involved in, a, in an accident, and although the collision didn't do very, a huge amount of damage, due to the lack of parts, the insurance company declared our vehicle a total loss. Due to that, um, we had to purchase a new vehicle. This is our new vehicle, the NX 300H, it's 2021. And our vehicle was a former service loaner. So before we purchased it, the dealership reset everything in the car. And when, when they reset uh, everything in the car, sometimes some of the features aren't working. And we bought ours from a BMW dealership and the BMW dealer they weren't familiar with NXs or Lexus vehicles, so they couldn't really help us out. So I'm going to give you a few tips on when you get one of these vehicles, what the issues can be. So we're going to go step inside the vehicle. I'm going to turn it on, and then I'm going to show you what, what you need to do. Okay, we're inside the vehicle right now, and one of the first issues I had is I connected Android Auto to the vehicle, and I was getting a message Android Auto was not available. The salesman tried his iPhone, and he got a similar message about CarPlay. And our vehicle's a 2021, so we know it has Android Auto and CarPlay wired from the factory. So if you have this issue, uh, it's a real simple fix, and I'm gonna show you how to do it here. So go to the menu, and go to Projection. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go to Setup, and then go to Projection Settings. And under here, you'll see a setting that says Apple CarPlay Android Auto. These are probably turned off, and that's probably why Android Auto and CarPlay doesn't work. Second issue is, while you're still in the Settings section, go down, and you'll continue down to software update press this and it'll give you the current software update hit check for updates and have it run through what you'll find is like with our vehicle because it had been sitting for a while the software update the vehicle needed a software update so do that too before before you do any big trips or that make sure this helps with the data Data communication module does the software update, so you don't need to connect your phone or anything else. It does it for you. Now, another thing I wanted to tell you, too, was a lot of people... Actually, I'm going to go here first. A lot of people said, especially with my HS250H, I enjoyed the maintenance menu, where it would tell me when I was ready for an oil change, a tire change, and such. In the NX vehicle, it's in the same setup screen, but if you go to the left, and you go down to Vehicle, and you'll see Maintenance. And then you'll see the same menu your HS250H has. And you just, just like, the, just like I think most other Lexus vehicles, you just select them, and you change the dates and mileage, and it'll give you a, uh, a, a, a reminder. And I love this feature because then I can look in real quick rather than hunting around my Lexus owner's website and looking up numbers and doing the math, it does it all for me. Another thing about this is vehicle customization. Um, our vehicles reset. This is really important here. I have automatic door lock by shift park and automatic door unlock shift P. If you don't have this set and you try to press the power lift gate, if the doors are locked, the power lift gate doesn't work. Another thing too is if the doors don't automatically unlock, you can't get the gas door open because the gas door, all doors must be unlocked for the gas door to open. So when the vehicle is reset by the dealer, these will be changed. These may not even, these may be blanked out. So. So with door locks, with shift from park, automatic door lock, and 
with shift unlock by shift to park the room the room and then I always have if you go here set doors to be locked all doors and that's important because if you don't set this off it will just unlock one door or the other door and what happens is you can't get your gas door open so all doors must be unlocked now now I want to switch over to the display here and if you look at I'm gonna try to do this with my here you go if you see this button here we're gonna use this to scroll so let's go to our center MIDI screen and if we go here and we if I scroll up and down you go to the left and you will see over here oops went too far there you go vehicle settings and TP scheduled maintenance if you take to this and if you press this button it will reset your oil change light and you'll get it when you press the trip odometer you want to go back and let me do this well without uh try it without moving the, the tablet too much because i don't want to reset it and the oil maintenance light is same here so you have oil maintenance and just a regular maintenance the scheduled maintenance i believe is for a tire rotation oil maintenance is for the oil change now if you want to know on the button here the trip odometer button let me get out of this first here to get that to a regular screen and uh, if i'm not scroll here but the re i keep my midi in this position with a digital speedometer but normally the default position is this here the fuel economy page but most people don't know or the dealership hasn't explained to you there's all this information here and you have energy monitors and such but you can just leave it here in your miles per, per hour and you have a digital speedometer and, and folks will say well that's fine but I want to know my range what my fuel economy is well if we go to our our, our display our infotainment display with 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 me I have the larger display because this is more of a premium model so you may have a smaller display so if you your screen will look like this and this is what you'll see and if your screen looks like this all you have to do is press you can get your your comp your mat display your split map display and when you're going down the highway this will tell you what exit is what and where your next rest stop is but it would also tell you your music selection and this is my favorite your range your fuel economy and how long it's been since you started the vehicle and you can even get a digital display of your air conditioning information, your HVAC systems. Me, I just leave it at the center page. This information here is a mirror of the MIDI screen. If you do want to reset this information, you reset the MIDI screen. It is not the information from fuel economy since last fill up that we can't reset the only way you reset that is when you add fuel to the vehicle so this you have to manually reset but it'll give you on your range on your using your fuel economy a good guess on what your range is left and one more thing i want to mention about fuel economy and range in these vehicles is the the epa sticker is about 31 i believe 31 in town 30, sorry 31 on the highway 33 in town um that number is going to be a really good guess on the oem factory tires but my vehicles oem factory tires are kind of worn to 632 and this is what i'm getting in town not on the highway it it gets about the same fuel economy in town um when I did it, when I brought this vehicle home in rush hour traffic at four o'clock in Tacoma, those of you who live in the Puget Sound area know all about what traffic like is in Tacoma. It 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 was still giving about thirty four miles per gallon. When I got home, it was a hundred mile trip and about 
30 miles of bumper to bumper, 20 mile an hour traffic on the interstate, I still averaged about 34 and a half. So these vehicles have pretty good fuel economy. And I myself personally haven't found this myself yet because I still have the original EM tires. But most people say when you replace them and put a more lower rolling resistant modern tire, which is better suited for the car, like a Michelin Cross Climate or the uh, Bridgestone Weather Peak, the the uh, fuel economy improves improves quite a bit. So 34 is not an uncommon number with those types of tires. I mean, again, this is for somebody like us who lives in the Pacific Northwest, where we live on hills, windy roads. If you live in the Midwest, the Canadian prairies, you're probably gonna get better gas mileage because it's a flat, flat surroundings. So like I said before in the beginning of the video, from now on, all my videos will be for the NX 300H. Um, unfortunately, the HS has departed us and this is our replacement vehicle. My next video, when when the vehicle's ready, I will do an all change video for the for you on the NX, and I will start all over again. And many of the videos that I had for the HS, I'll redo them for the NX. So, until the next time I meet you, happy motoring. And if you're a new buyer or a new owner of an an, an NX 300H like myself. You're in for a real treat. This is a really good vehicle, and as far as I'm concerned, the 300H, for me, of this line of vehicle is really the best vehicle, I think. I much prefer it over the 350H, and yes, it gets worse gas mileage, but I just like to ride in the feel of this vehicle. So enjoy yourselves, and happy motoring.